Welcome to the Water of Leith Conservation Trust. My name's Ruth Prince. I'm the Outdoor Learning Officer at the Trust. The Water of Leith Conservation Trust looks after the river, the Water of Leith, that starts up in the Pentland Hills, comes down right through the centre of the city of Edinburgh and drains into the Firth of Forth estuary and out then into the North Sea. Today we're going to be looking at some of the environmental issues that the river has faced both in the past now and how we intend how we intend to look after the river in the future. I'm going to be chatting with Charlotte Neary, our community and volunteers officer. Charlotte, you've now worked for the Trust for 21 years. When you first started working for the Trust, what kind of environmental issues did the river face? We'd do a clean-up on a Sunday, about 30 people would show up and in two and a half hours we used to be able to fill a cage with litter. A cage is about two and a half skips worth. Wow. We don't even order skips anymore, but back in the day, we used to fill one of those really quickly. The little was uh, old industrial waste, basically, from the old milling industry. It's things like contorted sharp metal, barbed wire, leaching machinery, old oil going into the river, half empty paint, paint can. Other issues uh, that we've had that have kind of gone away now, were uh, after a storm there used to be lots and lots and lots of supermarket plastic bags all getting wrapped around trees at the high water level. Well that's wonderful news about the plastic bag charge and that's really reduced the amount of plastic bags we're getting in and around the river. That's yeah. great news. Yeah. And those plastic bags were thick so they broke up easily uh, and then they were consumed in little bits by fish and then anything that ate the fish like otters, for instance, it would build up into their, into their, in their tummies, really. So the Trust has really grown, and now we have two conservation workers delivering five to six tasks every week with an amazing, dedicated crew of volunteers, without which we wouldn't be achieving what we're achieving. What are some of the environmental issues that the river is facing today? We're still needing to do clean-ups, can't get complacent about litter. Every conservation task we do has an element of a clean-up in it. We're finding a lot of this kind of litter actually, lunch pack litter, disposable items. Yeah. Sometimes that's just left beside the river, somebody's had a picnic or a takeaway and just left all their containers by the river. Sometimes it comes through uh, land drains. So if you, there's a land drain over there in fact, and if some, sometimes things get washed down the street, end up in a land drain, and that can end up in a river. That's incredible, because most people don't know that, do they? No, and it's not just hard litter, anything. So if you wash your car, that washings can go into the river. We've had, actually from that land drain, I once came down here, and the whole river was smelling like roses. And I thought that was very unnatural. And in fact, what was happening was that the laundrette was pumping all its washings into the street that was going down a land drain and coming straight into the river. And that harms the river as much uh, as sewage or something. So that's amazing. So do you mean if I was in my city street just to pour like some old paint or something down a land drain, that that could end up in the water of Leith? Yeah, definitely. Wow. In fact, during lockdown, when everybody was doing a lot of home DIY project products, that was one of the major issues. There was white spirits, white paint running down the land range into the river. I don't think a lot of people know that. Yeah. So I know historically, Charlotte, in Edinburgh, people used to often throw their sewage on the street or in the river. And now we've got sewage pipes that take our sewage away. It still can get into the river. In fact, the Water of Leaf has a few different combined sewage overflow pipes so that in a storm event, instead of all the sewage coming up through people's toilets and showers and sinks in their homes... Which wouldn't be great. No, that'd be awful. Mm. It actually gets washed out through a pipe into the river. Oh. So the idea is that there's so much water in the river in a storm event that uh, it doesn't harm the biology. It dilutes it enough so it doesn't harm the biology. However, this sewage system went in in the 1850s uh, it was an old Victorian brick sewage system and it, sometimes it cracks because of tree roots and things. So sometimes you do have issues with sewage getting into the river. The other thing is that, okay, so the, the actual raw sewage itself is diluted enough to not harm the biology, but 
that doesn't say anything about the aesthetic pollution. And by aesthetic pollution, I mean like the hard things. So wet wipes, mm -hmm. those funny things you put in your ears or you shouldn't put in your ears to clean them out. Uh, things that might fall down your toilet. So if you put something down the toilet, like a sanitary product, in a storm, that will end up in a river. It will end up in the water of leaf. And you do see them on the side of the river after there's been a high water event, don't we? Yeah, and that's another thing that our volunteers do. After a storm event, we go and wade the whole length of the river, pulling all that, all that sanitary products out of the brambles and out of the trees, because it's all made up of plastic. Um, and it, again, like the old plastic bag issue, breaks down into these tiny little bits that get consumed by fish and invertebrates and birds like kingfishers. That's terrible. How, do, how does wildlife get affected by water quality? Uh, if you call, water quality is bad, things like invertebrates that live in the river die. Uh, there's a type of invertebrate called a mayfly nymph, which is pollution intolerant. So that's a tiny little bug that starts its life in the river. Eventually it bursts out the river as a mayfly, it lays it eggs and the whole cycle starts again. But there's a lot of different invertebrates, hundreds of different types of invertebrates in the water itself. And that is food for fish. Uh, so if you have something in the water that affects the aquatic plant life or the invertebrate life and that wipes it out, so something like a high amount of sewage or uh, something weird going down a land drain like turpentine that kills invertebrates you affect you affect the whole ecosystem because you wipe up wipe out the smaller things in the river uh, then you've got nothing for the fish to eat so when I first started 21 years ago on the water of Leith, we very rarely saw otters on the river uh, I think that was because there wasn't a, a, a good enough fish source for them to eat so they weren't here because there was not enough for them to eat. But since the biological health of the river has improved, we've got more and more otters using the water of leaf. Last year, we recorded nine different otters on using the water of leaf. That's wonderful. And we also had a beautiful little litter of otters, which I was lucky enough to watch a mother bringing her three babies into the river and teaching them how to fish, which was a wonderful experience. For an urban environment, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. And such, it shows a really big improvement in the water quality in the, uh, just in the last two decades. So we've now come down off the walkway. We're in the beautiful, protected, ancient woodlands of the Craig Lock at Dells. And as soon as I stepped off the walkway and came down to the river, I was overwhelmed with this gorgeous smell of water mint and sweet sesame. And it's just a lovely, summer's day down here and we're surrounded by this wonderful biodiversity here right in the centre of Edinburgh and yet I know all this biodiversity wouldn't be possible unless we did work to put, fight back the invasive plants that also live around here and I know Charlotte you've been doing a lot of work for a number of years on invasives. That's right uh, with the volunteers too. We've got three main invasive plant species along the water of Leith. Himalayan balsam, Japanese knotweed, and giant hogweed, there's one there. Uh, we control all of those plants using volunteers. And in fact, we're standing in uh, one of our test plots that we're looking at, at ways of controlling, different ways of controlling giant hogweed along the water of Leith. We're doing a four year research project with Napier University, looking at the effects of using a herbicide, using digging, and using a reduced amount of herbicide on not just the giant hogweed, but all the other plant species in the field plots. We know that really the big environmental issue that we're facing is climate change. We're looking at a temperature change of 1.5 degrees centigrade, and that's only if all the governments meet their targets. On a river, that affects the whole ecology of the river, it affects the life cycle, it affects food chains. So how can the work of a conservation charity, like the Water Relief Conservation Trust, work to reduce the effects of climate change? We need to build resilience in the biodiversity. Right now, here we are in a meadow, lots and lots of different species of wild plants here, 72 I think. And you can just see all the bees and the flying insects and the butterflies and the moths pollinating all of these native flowers. And that is you know, just a, a testament to the biodiversity in the green spaces along the river. And a river connects all these green spaces together. It connects the countryside 
to the sea, it connects, it goes right through the middle of a capital city, it connects the parks and the wild space. It's not just about the green space, we also want to increase the fish passage in the blue space, the river itself. What about, you talk about connecting up green space and blue space, but why is it so important that green spaces are connected? Otherwise, species are just restricted to one area. If they've got a safe way of travelling between different green and blue spaces, their population will be a lot more genetically healthy. We've talked a lot about the river in its urban setting, but there's a good 12, 13 miles of river up in the Pentland Hills that's agricultural, grazed by sheep and cattle, and then there's also some forestry up there. How can we work in that part of the river to reduce the impact of climate change? I feel like that it's all about carbon mitigation up in the, in the rural parts of the river, in the upper catchment. In fact, there's quite a lot of long-term goals highlighted in the Water and Leaf Management Plan, which can be downloaded from our website. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking about things, or we've been thinking about things like uh, the restoration of peat moorland or preservation of existing good quality peat moorland, like right up at the source. Also tree planting in appropriate places, and also uh, meadow floodplains. I feel like you can't manage a river in isolation and you really need to think about the upper catchment, the urban setting, the green space and the blue space. You need to think about the sea and how all the tributaries feed into the water of Leith uh, and how it connects to all the other green spaces within Edinburgh. We're really lucky in Edinburgh to have so much green space, wild green space, but the water of Leith plays a massive part in connecting that all together. What we do at the Trust as well is community engagement. It's really important that everybody finds out about the river, looks after it, but also gets out and enjoys it. Absolutely. We've got the Volunteers Programme. We've got, also got your Outdoor Learning Programme. Absolutely. That way, thousands of children every year in Edinburgh get to come, enjoy the river, guddle in the river, find out about the amazing creatures that live in the river, and they love it. The Waterloo Walkway, 13 and a half miles of it, is an active travel route as well. So teaching them from schools and then having the volunteers out and then encouraging the public to use the walkway means that everybody's involved in the Waterloo uh, and can appreciate the Waterloo And spending less time in the car as well. Oh uh, yeah, commuting and going to all their local amenities using the walkway. And instead they get to go along the river, enjoy the beautiful river in all its seasons, because really, you can only really care about losing something if you love it, I think.